Hello, ladies. I hope you are doing wonderful today. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. And we are going to talk about the rest of our chapter six information here. We have talked about how the merchandising um, income statement looks very different than a service company's income statement. And we've talked about perpetual inventory and periodic inventory and how those are different with several different um, journal entries. So make sure if you haven't watched those videos, lecture one and two, that you go back and watch those. But now we are gonna talk about credit terms and discounts, and we're also gonna talk about sales returns. So we're gonna finish out chapter six today with this lecture. And then we're gonna have sort of a hands-on project for our final lecture for chapter six. Okay, so let me move that there. Okay, so our credit terms and cash discounts. So sometimes companies will offer a discount if you pay sooner, which is pretty awesome. It's a way that you can save money and a way that a person who's offering that discount can get their receivables sooner. And this is something that happens a lot in the real world and it really does help people to pay their receivables a lot sooner, which is good for both sides of the company. So when someone offers a discount, you're gonna see something like this, two slash 10 comma n slash 30. That's a super common way to see this discount written. So what does that mean? We call it 210 net 30. So what it means, the two means the percentage of discount that you will receive. So you'll get 2% discount. The 10 tells us how many days we have to pay it in to get that discount. So if we pay our receivable, if we pay how much we owe in 10 days, then we will receive a 2% discount. Awesome. And then the N means otherwise the full amount is due and it's due in 30 days. So the two means the percentage discount you'll get. The 10 is how many days you have to pay within to get that discount. Then separately, the N stands for otherwise pay the full amount in, and in this example, it's 30 days. This is a very common um, percentage that you will see offered in 10 days. Um, otherwise, typically your bills are due in 30 days. So this is usually, when a manufacturer buys from a wholesaler and this might be what the invoice says to them. So it will say this invoice was issued on September 1st. Then it says your payment terms are two slash 10 comma N slash 30. That means you will get a 2% discount if you pay within 10 days or you can pay the full amount which is due within 30 days. So that's what that payment term means. So how do we account for that? That's the important thing here. So in this example, on November 3rd, Computer City purchased 100 spreadsheet programs for $100 each from PC products. Their credit terms were 2 slash 10 or net 30. Prepare the journal entry for Computer City. So this is what our journal entry would look like. So we are expecting that we are going to pay in those 10 days. So we are going to just record 98% of the price that we owe. We owe $10,000, but we say we're gonna take advantage of that 2% discount. So we are just gonna record our inventory of $10,000 times the 98%. The 98% because we are taking 2% as a discount because we're gonna pay early. So. We're gonna record our inventory increase of $9,800, and then accounts payable, 9,800. We're gonna pay it early, so we're gonna go ahead and say we only owe 9,800 to PC products. So that would be our first journal entry for this. Then on November 10th, remember that invoice was November 3rd. So then on November 10th, Computer City pays the full amount due, and so this would be the journal entry. So did they pay within the 10 days? Yes, they bought it on November 3rd and they paid by November 10th. 
that is 10 days or less. So awesome, we got to take that 2% that discount. We only had to pay 98% of the product that we ordered, so that's awesome. So that means we are going to decrease or get rid of that $9,800 accounts payable. And we are going to um, also decrease with a credit our cash account for the 9,800 because we paid them that cash. So now we have 9,800 less in cash and 9,800 less in a payable. Okay, so now we're gonna record purchases at net cost. Okay, so let's say we did not pay within the 10 days. This is a different scenario. We had same bill, November 3rd, we had to pay within 10 days to get that 2%. We recorded that first entry, but you know what? Cash was a little short, so we did not pay it until the 30 days. So December 3rd, we paid the full 10,000. We did not get to take the discount. So this is what the journal entry would look like because we lost that purchase discount. We are going to debit accounts payable for the 9,800. So that is the full amount that we had recorded in accounts payable that we owed. And we know that we actually paid out 10,000 in cash. So we need to debit an account called purchase discounts lost for the $200 that we did not take advantage of. So we have gotten rid of our accounts payable that was on the books because we went ahead and paid it. And we have recognized that we lost that purchase discount and we have recorded the outgoing of cash of $10,000. So that is the discounts, but what if we return some of the goods, some of the merchandise that we had ordered, we decided to return. So on November 9th, remember we purchased it on November 3rd. November 9th, Computer City returned $500 of unsatisfactory merchandise purchased from PC products. With, with those credit terms of 2% 10 net 30. The purchase was originally recorded at net cost to prepare the entry for Computer City. So we are going back again to where we've only recorded that initial entry. We have debited inventory for $9,800 and we have credited accounts payable for $9,800 on November 3rd. So here we are November 9th. We have not paid yet. Okay. We are returning $500 worth of the product. But since we are planning to pay within the discount period in this scenario, we're going to take that $500 times 98% because at this point we have not recorded any of our goods at 100%. So it's only going to be $490 worth of product that we're returning as far as our books go. So we are going to debit accounts payable for $490 to get rid of that big amount that we were thinking that we were going to owe for accounts payable. And then we are going to decrease our inventory by $490 because we no longer have all of the um, spreadsheet software that we had originally ordered. <clears throat> Some other important notes to make is transportation cost. So the cost that relates to actually going and getting the inventory or then shipping it to us, they are not expenses of the current period. They are part of the cost of the asset being acquired. So what that means is it's part of inventory. So the cost of shipping that inventory to us is actually going to be included in our inventory. All right. Let me move this a little bit. Okay, so in this scenario, we have, we are looking at our income statement for the transactions that we have made. So we have sales of 912,000. We had sales returns of $8,000. So of the $912 that we sold to customers, $8,000 of that was returned to us. So they were unsatisfied with those goods. And then we offered our customers a discount. So those 
a lot of people took advantage of that discount and paid within our terms. So we also have to show that we had $4,000 of discounts. That's both the returns and the discounts are gonna bring down our revenue number. So um, total, they bring it down by $12,000, which means our net sales were 900,000. So after our um, sales returns and our sales discounts, our net sales are $900,000. $900, So on November 3rd, Computer City sold 2,000 of the merchandise to Highlander Pub on credit terms, same credit terms, terms 2% 10 and net 30. Computer City originally paid $1,200 for that merchandise. Because Computer City uses perpetual inventory, so they're constantly keeping up with inventory, they have to make two entries. First, they are going to say accounts receivable is increased because now this Highlander pub owes us $2,000 and our sales have increased by $2,000. We also, since we're doing perpetual inventory, are going to go ahead and make an entry to cost of goods sold and inventory. So we're gonna increase cost of goods sold. Remember, it's just like an expense account to where it is debited when we incur that cost and we credit inventory because some of our inventory has now left our warehouse. So that would be our entry for that sale. Okay, then on November 5th, Highlander Pub returned $1,000 of unsatisfactory merchandise to Computer City from that November 3rd sale. So Computer City's cost for the merchandise was $600. So, they returned half of the merchandise that they bought from us just two days before. So since we keep that perpetual inventory for Computer City, this is what our, our, um, our journal entries would look like for that sell return. So we're going to debit sales returns and allowances for the $1,000 they return. And then we are going to credit accounts receivable for the 1,000 because they no longer owe us half of the money that they originally did. They originally owed us $2,000, now they only owe us 1,000. So we need to reduce our accounts receivable. And that sales return and allowances is reducing sales, remember, like we saw on that income statement. Well, that also means that we have brought back $600 in inventory. So we're gonna go ahead and bump our inventory back up to $600 and we are going to get that cost of goods sold back to where it needs to be. So we're going to credit cost of goods sold for 600. All right, and then on November 10th, Computer City receives the full amount due from Highlander Pub from the November 3rd sale. So they took advantage of that 2% discount by paying within 10 days. Well, at this point, they only owed $1,000. So this is what our entry is gonna look like. We brought in cash of, 20, of $980, so we debit cash. And then we recognize a sell discount, which is going to decrease our sales, so it's a debit of $20. They took that $20 discount. And then our receivables, we were saying they owed us $1,000. They no longer owe us that. So we are going to credit accounts receivable for $1,000. Okay, so accounting for sales taxes. So businesses collect sales tax at the point of sale. You have to collect the sales tax at the point of sale. Otherwise, the company is most likely gonna be stuck with those taxes. So they later pay the appropriate governmental agency um, the taxes. So even though they went ahead and took the taxes at the time of sale, they might not owe them until the end of the quarter, but we had to go ahead and take those sales tax, or usually sales tax is paid every month. So we, let's see, the sales tax, we had a um, $1,000 sale and there was 7% sales tax due. So that cash that they gave us, um, the cash if we had $1,000 were recount, accounts receivable, if I can talk, um, that would have been $1,000. They also owed us $70 in sales tax. So they now owe us $1,070.
So all of that is not gonna be revenue. $70 of it is sales tax payable because we're gonna to have to pay the government that $70. And then the other $1,000 is the sales or the revenue. All right, that is all I have for you to finish out chapter six. I hope that you ladies have a fantastic rest of the day. Please reach out with questions.